If you turn in your Bibles, if you have your Bibles with you, please, to the uh, Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, and we'll go to chapter 23 and commence reading at verse 37. Matthew chapter 23, commencing to read at verse 37. A number of verses I want to read here, and I want to read over to chapter 24 4 and verse 44, please. So just bear with me while I go through this reading. Commencing to read at verse 37 of 23. Lord Jesus Christ, he is speaking here. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. I oft would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations, and kingdoms shall against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall bind, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this, king, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let him that which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them which are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For there then shall be great tribulation, such as what not, was not since the beginning of the world, to this time no, not ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, and so much that even if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things shall be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall not pass away, but my word shall not pass away. 
but of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered the house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. And then God bless that reading to our hearts. Entitled this message tonight, The King is Coming. The King is coming, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is coming back again. I'm sure you can recall last weekend, UK received warnings of an approaching hurricane, Storm Ophelia, and uh, everybody was advised there was a very strong storm coming, and ex-hurricane actually had gone down to storm by the time it arrived in the UK. And the warnings were given out, the, the weathermen had seen on their graphs and their, their photographs from images taken from space probably by the satellites they had seen the warnings the approaching storm was coming and everybody took heed of the warning the schools were closed down where well, the place where i work in kukil in the factory here the aircraft factory in kukil they were all sent home at 12 o'clock the weathermen had been looking out for the signs coming of the storm the storm just warned us and most people took heed to the warnings I know if you were watching the television, there was one guy who was seen out in Galway Bay, I think he was out swimming in it. And other people certainly weren't paying, they seemed to pay much attention to the warnings to what they were doing. But uh, it did come. And three people in Ireland lost their lives due to, the, due to the storm. Such was its fierceness, blowing down trees over roads and killing people. Yes, the men, the weathermen had, looked, had seen the signs. And as predicted, the storm did come, and it was uh, quite fierce when it did come. We like to see the signs when things are happening and things are coming. And the Bible warns us here, New Testament, about the Lord Jesus Christ coming back again, there will be signs coming. There will be signs shown. And you know, people like to know the future, they like to be able to predict the future, what's going to happen. People spend money going to fortune tellers, trying to Look for answers to what's happening in the future when the only source that we're advised to go to is the Word of God. Only it is true. Only it is right. Only it can we trust regarding the future. So tonight we're going to examine what the Bible says about the future and about the great event that is coming, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The King is coming. Now we're beginning off our reading in chapter 23 and verse 39. Um, Jesus has said, You shall not see me till you say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, speaking of the future day when he would come back again and Israel would see him once more. And uh, this must have stirred up an interest in the disciples because it was then at the beginning uh, of chapter 24. The disciples, they wanted to show the Lord Jesus the temple and 24 and verse 1, he went out and departed from the temple, and the disciples came to him for to show him the buildings. And this temple that was built, it was called Herod's Temple, it was a, a magnific magnificent building, one of the great building wonders of the world at that time, probably the greatest uh, that people have seen. And people said to each other at that time, if you haven't seen Herod's Temple, you haven't really seen anything. Such was the um, a magnificence of the building. Apparently, there were some of the giant stones that were made to build it were 70 tons in weight. They were about 40 feet long. And the, the temple was decked with marble. It was decked with gold. And when the sun came up in the morning, it reflected off the golden sides in the temple. And it was indeed a, a great wonder to behold. And they were taken up with this. And they were wanting to show off probably to the Lord Jesus, telling the Lord Jesus about it. 
But then the Lord Jesus says in verse 2, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. The Lord Jesus here makes an amazing prediction about the near future. And this indeed was fulfilled in AD 70 with the destruction of the temple. And the Romans, they entered it under Emperor Titus when all this came true, just as the Lord Jesus had said. The Lord Jesus was indeed a true prophet. There are many false prophets were going about. There was people, and in, in the Old Testament, there was false, false prophets. And you know, one of the things that rang true of those who were from God was when the prophecies actually did come true. And we know that Lord Jesus himself, what he spoke was the truth. And this was fulfilled in AD 70. It can be testified as in history. It was an actual thing that happened in AD 70, a few years later, as he had predicted. predicted. And surely, if we trust the Word of God regarding these things, we can look into history and see things that were predicted in the Old Testament, things that Jesus said. We know that the Bible that we have is the very Word of God and that what it says is true. We can trust the Word of God. In verse 3, the disciples asked two questions. Tell us, when shall these things be? They want to know when all these things would happen. And then the other thing was, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, Jesus answers their questions, maybe not in the way they asked them. He asked actually the second, answered the second question first, and the first question he answered last. He answered both these questions, but in the reverse order. The surety of his coming, the first thing, indeed, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again. It was in World War II, there was a famous general called General Douglas MacArthur. He was a five-star general and the war, World War II commander of the U.S. forces in the Far East. And uh, the Japanese were beginning to take over and they ousted the Americans from the Philippines in 1942. But General MacArthur, he said on leaving, he promised the Philippines, he says, I shall return. And then on, uh, in February 1945, he fulfilled his promise when the Japanese surrendered. And just as he had said, I shall return, the Lord Jesus, remember he says in, jo in John chapter 14, verse 3, Jesus said to his disciples, I will return. In Acts chapter 1, verses 9 and 11, and we'll just go over and read those verses actually. In Acts chapter 1, remember the Lord Jesus Christ after he had uh, risen again, and then he was returning back up into heaven. Remember what happened? And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he stood up, behold, two men stood by them in white pearl, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Just as he was promised he would come the first time, he has promised that he would come again the second time. The Bible, we know from the Old Testament, from passages in the Old Testament, the Lord Jesus' uh, first coming was predicted. And everything that's said about his first coming came true. The place where he was, would be born, in Bethlehem of Judea, how he would die, Isaiah 53, but he was wounded for our transgressions, the fact that the Lord Jesus would die in our place. The Lord Jesus came, he died, and he died in our place. He rose again. All those came true about his first coming, and all the passages that refer to his second coming, surely we can depend on them. The Bible, indeed, is the very word of God. Jesus will return to earth a second time. First time he came to save. First time he came to save us from our sins, to pay the ransom price that only he could pay. Next time he'll be coming, it will be in judgment. He'll be coming visibly, He'll be coming bodily, he'll be coming literally, it'll be a personal and a local, he'll be returned to the same place as he, as he left. Yes, indeed, the surety of his coming. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back again. 
just as was told in the Word of God. Then the next thing the Lord Jesus goes on to in this passage is the signs of his coming. Now, I'm not going to take time to go through all these. Um, well, just to mention them quickly, there's false Christs will arise, wars and rumors of wars, famines, earthquakes, persecution, false prophets, apostasy, worldwide evangelization, the abomination of de desolation, miracles, and also signs in the sky. Now, I know when I was younger, I used to think that all these signs that it talks about here, the Lord Jesus talking about, was talking about before he would come back, before the rapture and take his people home. But you know that these, these here verses are talking about after the, after the church is taken, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, the, he takes his believers to be with him, all these signs will be kicking off once the Lord Jesus takes the church home. And then this will, these start to kick in and during the seven years of the tribulation. Yes, we have wars in these days. We have rumors of wars in these days. But not in the scale that it will be during the seven years of the tribulation. And all these things will grow much more intense during the seven years of the, of the tribulation. One, one, of the, uh, one of the signs that surely we can't think of. You know, when the Lord Jesus was speaking at this time, it was just after that, you remember, there's a destruction of the temple, as I told, and all the Jews, they were basically scattered to all the uh, places of the earth. Well, in this passage, we know that he's referring to the Jews because we can read in verses, um, in, uh, back in this passage of Matthew 24, we know that he's referring to, he's talking to the Jews specifically because um, he mentions the thing, pray not that you're, uh, when you're on, it will not be in the, uh, on the Sabbath. Um, let me see, in verse 19 and 20, he says, Unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world, to this time nor ever shall be. So we know that he was talking to the Jewish people. He was talking to the people when they would be still in their own land, and they were persecuted, they were driven out by the Romans, they, they were scattered to all people, the earth, peoples of the earth. So we know that when he was referring to the disciples at this time, these signs that he was talking about was especially to the Jewish people and especially to the time of the tribulation because uh, there was no Jews, there has been no Jews in the land until this last century. Remember, for nearly um, 1,900 years, the people were without a land. So let us look at the sign of the people of Israel. As I say, the people were speaking to Israel the Lord Jesus is speaking to Israel, and uh, the coming of the Lord, the people of Israel will be back in Israel. For 2,000 years, they, for nearly 2,000 years, they've been scattered across uh, the face of the earth in all countries of the world. You nearly find a Jewish population. But while they were there, they were preserved their identity. You know, usually when any other people, you think of people have been scattered, they would lose their identity. They mix in with the populations in other parts of the world, but the Jewish people, they have remained their identity throughout the 2,000 years and believe that's because they are God's chosen people. God is not finished with them. You know, in Luke 21 and 24, we have this verse, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations, which is what's happened. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So we know there's a time for the Jews to return. And... We know that God hasn't finished with Israel. You know, Paul asked that question in Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Hath God uh, forgotten Israel? And we know the answer to that. No, he has not. In uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, we have this uh, prophecy, sorry, verses 11 and 12 of Isaiah 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, and from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Hasn't that come true? 
we only need to look back over this last hundred years. At the beginning of the 20th century, the country, the people of Israel, they were without a land. In 1908, 40, only 47,000 Jews were in the land of Palestine. Today, there are over 8 million. For 2,000 years, they were scattered. And at the end of the 19th century, there was one of the Jewish people called Theodore Herzl. He uh, commenced the Zionist movement to try and get his own people, the Jewish people, back to their land. And one of the things that helped bring this about was during the, during the First World War, they, the British people, they were in need of uh, materials to make gunpowder. And the Jewish scientist, Shane Wiseman, he was asked, and he came up with the answer to be able to get one of the materials they needed was from uh, chestnuts, and they were able to use this. And so after the war was over, there was uh, the Balfour Declaration, which was recognized that the people, the Jewish people, this is one of the things how I re rewarded this Jewish person. And to set up the Balfour Declaration that Israel needed a land. And so this was, this was realized <coughs> on the 14th of May, 1948, when David Ben-Gurion announced the establishment of the Jewish nation. Yes, <coughs> people had given up, I think, on the Jewish people. People had thought Israel would never be back in this land, yet by a miracle, in a short time, the Jewish nation was re-established. We even think of the things that even this tiny nation, once it was established, with only a small number of people, a very tiny nation. We think on June 1967, three Arab nations surrounded it to try and destroy Israel. And yet, one of the shortest, greatest defeats in, Israel, in history was the Six-Day War when Israel defeated all three nations. And it still remains a nation today, a miracle by any standard. Well, someone once asked, what was the greatest sign that the Bible is true, that we can trust it. And the answer was that Israel, just the word Israel, they're a miracle. No other people has survived like them. Think of the other peoples that were in the days of the Old Testament when the uh, uh, Jewish people were on the earth. Think of the Philistines. Think of the Jebusites. You never know of any of them peoples today. But Israel remains today. It's a miracle of God. They're God's chosen people. And God still hasn't finished with them. God needs the, when we're looking at that passage, Israel need to be back in the land for those things to take place. And as we see today, Israel is back in the land. Everything we, when we look around us, we can see that everything is in place for the coming again of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is returned. The King is coming. Yes, we look at the signs of his coming. We look at the sin that is coming, specifically verses 37 to 39 of our passage in Matthew 24. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. You say here, <clears throat> the, sin, the sin of indifference. When we look back in the days of Noah, you know, we know that God destroyed the world because of a, the, the wickedness of the people. It was marked by wickedness, but it was marked by the indifference to the warnings. We know that uh, Noah, he preached for a, 120 years, and they never heeded his warning. Only Noah and his three sons and their wives were they saved, eight people in all. There's not anything wrong with eating. There's not anything wrong with drinking. There's not anything wrong with marrying or giving in marriage. But the sin here we can see is the sin of indifference. People not listening to the Word of God. People uh, making a mockery of the Word of God. And surely that's what's happening in our own day as well. People just continuing on with their lives, not wanting to worry about the things of God, not worrying that one day it's all going to end. The world won't continue as it is forever. Yes, it is a sin, a sin of indifference. Then we think of the, the separation that is coming. Verses 40 to 42. Then shall be two, two shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour that your Lord doth come. Think of the great sadness that will take place when the Lord comes back again. 
two people, one will be saved, one will not be saved. One colleague will be taken, maybe working in a factory, maybe working in a business, maybe working in a field as the farmers do, maybe two women working together. One will be taken, one will be left. The great separation that will take to place. People will separate from their colleagues. Families will be separated. Loved ones will be separated. Some people, just because you're born into a Christian family doesn't mean you're going to be saved. I was born into a Christian family didn't mean that I was not automatically saved. I had to trust the Lord. I had to repent from my sin just like anybody else who needs to be saved. People, loved ones, will be separated at His coming. It will be a terrible day for those who will be left behind. Will you be ready when He returns? Will you be left behind? The separation that is coming. And then, of course, there is the suddenness, suddenness of His coming, 42 to 44. Therefore be, uh, watch therefore, for you know not what your, are your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known and what, watched the thief would come, he would have watched and would have suffered <clears throat> his house to be broken up. A thief doesn't send you a postcard. He doesn't send a letter to advise you that he's coming to your house. I know when we lived in Brazil one time, we, uh, we were, it was actually during the day the house was broken into. Uh, we were way over at a meeting on one Sunday afternoon. And uh, uh, when we came back again, there actually had been a lady in the house, but people had been watching houses. They knew every Sunday afternoon we went away over to the meeting to take a meeting in the afternoon for the young people. And uh, when we came back again, uh, there was a lot of hullabaloo, police cars and that had been at the house. There had been somebody in the house looking after Josh and Caleb, who were only babies at the time, and uh, they had broken in through the back door. But one of our neighbours had been watching and called the police and alerted. And uh, it, uh, it caused a bit of a fight. And after it, we had to put special things around our gate to stop uh, thieves jumping over in the wall. That's the kind of thing they do there in Brazil, by the way. We don't have to do that here yet. But uh, it's a terrible experience if you ever get your house broken into. It makes you feel, it makes you feel very vulnerable. And one of our other colleagues, Trevor Bennett and his wife, a sh short time after that, then, they were living in another town. The thieves broke in during the night, came in and stole stuff out of the house and out again without, them, without waking a soul in the house. But as I say, the thief doesn't send a letter. He doesn't make a phone call. He doesn't send a text to say, oh, I'm going to come tonight to rob your house. Could you please be out? No, the thief comes when you're not expecting it. It's unexpected. It's unwelcome. He doesn't send no advice that he's coming. The Lord Jesus will come back again when we're not expecting it. People will be going about their own business. People will uh, not take heed to the warnings. He will come back uh, very quickly and unexpectedly, the suddenness of his coming. And then quickly moving on, the secret of his coming. Down through the years, many have predicted dates for the return of the Savior. Charles T. S. Russell of the, um, we know from the cults, he predicted uh, the return, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, that is, predicted the return of Jesus to occur in 1874 and also 1914. It didn't occur. Um, Nostradamus predicted that uh, Jesus Christ would return back in 1999. Even preachers, uh, well-meaning preachers, have tried to predict the, uh, for example, Isaac Newton predicted the Christ millennium would begin in the year 2000 in his book, Observations from the Prophecies of Daniel. Jonathan Edwards, a great preacher in the United States, the 18th century preacher predicted that Christ's thousand year reign would uh, begin in the year 2000. And then uh, I think, uh, yeah, it was John Haggai, a preacher in the United States. Uh, I think he's in Dallas, Texas. He uh, came up with a blood moon prophecy just a couple of years ago in 2008, but it never came true. And then we, I don't know if you know, it was in the, all recently there on the 23rd of September, uh, one of the once uh, exponents of the theory was a man called Robert Breaker. I was talking about the alignment of the planets and everybody uh, saying, oh, all the planets are going to line up in a certain way. Uh, the Lord will come back again on the 23rd of September. The 23rd of September came and went. And it's wrong. What does the Bible say? 
We should not take heed of these things. Believers can't even be caught up in these things. But it's wrong. The Bible is completely against it. The Lord Jesus even adamantly told in verse 36, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No man knows. Not the angels of heaven. The angels don't know. We read of the prophecies in the New Testament. There's three, about 318 of them referring to the second coming. And none of them tell us of a date. So I think the Lord Jesus is trying to tell his disciples here clearly, don't be looking for dates and times of the Lord's coming. Yes, there's signs coming when it will come. Yes, we think of, as I mentioned, it's toward, towards the, in, in the tribulation. But for the, uh, for the believers, we're not to be looking for dates. We're to be ready at any moment. The Lord Jesus will come back again any moment to the air. And there's no, <clears throat> there's no prophecies in the New Testament referred to predictions of the Lord Jesus Christ coming to the air. He could come back at any moment. And just like the, I remember hearing the story of a gardener a number of years ago, of a gardener who, uh, the owner of his house, he worked for a very rich man, he owned a great mansion, and uh, uh, he was told to look after the garden. And it was only now and again that the owner of the house would actually return to the garden, or actually return to the house. But the gardener, he kept it meticulously every day. And someone asked him, well, sure, the, the owner of the house is never here. Why do you look after so carefully? Uh, I says, but I don't know what day he's going to come back again. And it's exactly the same for us as believers. Yes, he will return. He is coming. But we don't know the day or the hour when he will return. I do not, yes, we do not know the, the day when the Lord Jesus Christ will, will come back again. I have more things to say about this, but I'm going to just quickly finish off. There's, you know, we, we could mention the severity of his coming. He's going to come back in judgment again. And read the verses, for example, 2 Thessalonians verses 7 to 9. As to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Yes, there's going to be a severity coming for those who aren't ready, taking vengeance on them who know not God, and they will be punished with everlasting. The warning is, you must be ready. If you're not ready, if, you're not, have you not, if you haven't repented of your sin, if you're not trusting in the finished work of Christ on the cross, the warning is you will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. And then just quickly to finish off with, the saved that is coming. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. Friend, loved one, whoever is listening tonight, are you ready for the king when he returns? He could come back at any moment. He's coming to the air, first of all, to receive his, his own, his loved ones, and then there will be the seven years of tribulation, and then he'll be here to the earth to bring uh, his vengeance on those who have rejected him. I trust you will, be, you will be ready. You will not be left behind. I'm going to ask the Emmanuel to come up now and finish off with our final piece, please. The King is coming. Thank you.